afternoon. Welcome to the new Fairmont Heights High School in Landover, Maryland, established 2017. But the men I'm sitting with are from the original Fairmont Heights High School. My name is Carlos Perlman. I am the president and founder of the Fairmont Heights Football Alumni Association. Our program started in 1956 and continues to this day in 2022. But today we're here to capture some of the great memories, great stories of the men who made the program, the school, and the community great. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and pass the mic to the vice president. I'll pass it to him. Let him introduce himself to you. Good afternoon. My name is Antoine Tony Law, also known as Tony Jeter. I'm a class of 1982, position running back, and uh, I'm just really honored to be here among these legends. So glad to be here, guys. Good afternoon. My name is Al Williams, also known as Blue. I uh, played the wide receiver position and also the defensive end position. Uh, only time I came off the field was when we was kicking off. That's what you call the Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah, yes, my name is Harvey. Yeah. yeah, come on, love. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Harvey Dorsey, uh, better known as Broadway Doe, number 12. And uh, from my high school career, football-wise, was a pleasure. It almost didn't happen my senior year because we didn't have a, a coach um, because Coach Farmer had just got promoted to to be a, a, a vice principal at uh, junior high school. So we was without a coach, and I was on the verge of maybe transferring because I did not want to miss my senior year of playing. But thank goodness uh, we did find a coach, which was one of the greatest coaches Farmer ever had, was Robert Cashwell. So he came in and... Um, took over the show. So just want to let you get a little piece of me for right now. My man. Donald Caldwell, class of 1968, defensive back, slot receiver, offense. It's just a pleasure to um, be associated and the memories that we all had as teammates. Thank you. Yes, gentlemen and scholar. <laughs> um, my name is Eugene Jordan. I played right tackle, believe it or not. I graduated from Fairmont Heights in 1959. I played 57, 58, and 59. One year after the program began. And this was a great place. When I speak of a great place, Fairmont Heights itself. Um, I went to elementary school, Fairmont Heights Elementary School. I was raised in Fairmont Heights. And this prepared me for the life uh, that I've been leading for the last 80 years. But it's great. My name is Tillman Cease, uh, class of 68. Uh, played quarterback. Uh, and I'm just happy to be here with all these gentlemen and uh, the memories are flowing back in. I don't know what's, what stands out as the being uh, the most uh, unique part of, the, of my time there, but uh, as, as we talk today, I will be adding in some, some insight, but uh, I'm just glad to be here with these gentlemen and, and hope we can do this again. Okay, my name is Gerald Petey Stewart. I graduated in 1968 along with Cease, and uh, we were the on the years that we were members of the first championship for Fairmont Heights. Uh, Cashwell, as someone else had already mentioned, was a great coach, and to him, I was the problem child. I had the biggest <laughs> mouth in the entire school. Everywhere I went, my big mouth preceded me. And it's still that way. <laughs> all right, all right. My name is Joe Parker, class of 1975. I want to say that, uh, well, first of all, I played wide receiver and free safety. Back then, we had to play both ways. Um, but it is truly a pleasure and an honor. I feel like I'm sitting on Mount Rushmore with all these greats. These are truly the guys that came before me. I'll tell my story later. 
Hi, my name is John Brooks, class of 1970. I played uh, offensive tackle and defensive end. I played on three championship football teams at Fairmont Heights. I was fortunate enough to have all of my childhood role models as football players, uh, Blue Williams, Harvey Dorsey. I used to watch him through the fence. Petey used to beat me up in practice, and I was most successful because Tillman Cease told me I couldn't catch, go down there with the linemen. <laughs> So I stayed. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a heck of an introduction among Fairmont Heights, not just Fairmont football, but Fairmont Heights royalty. And I want to say myself as a graduate of the class in 1987, and I played 83, 84, 85, and 86, starting center and defensive end. And really what, to me, what Fairmont Heights football and, and, and what the school and the community means to me is that you never quit when times get rough. Because we faced a lot of adversity um, during the four years I was there at the school. And uh, Coach Payton and myself had plenty of one-on-ones. I was honored to be his, one of his co-captains my junior and senior year, and we had plenty of discussions. He even hit me in the chest once during the middle of a football game and told me to tighten up, and it worked. We won the game. <laughs> but uh, he taught me how to be a leader. He taught me how to be uh, a teacher. He taught me how to be a man. I saw my coaches more than I saw my parents in the 1980s, or more than I saw my father, rather, in the 1980s. And um, I can't do enough to try to give back to this school and this program that has basically given me my life. So that's why I'm here today. And I'm going to continue to pass the mic again. So now you can really get some insight from these great men about the history of the game and what it meant to be a black athlete in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, or 80s. So I'll start with Mr. Tony Law. What you got for us, brother? Well, again, my name is Tony Law. Um, I want to first, again, start off by saying how honored I am to be in the presence of, of true legends, man. I've been thinking about this for quite some time. What would I say? You know, and I wrote down some things to say, but I thought about it really well, and I thought everything you need to say really comes from the heart. It comes from experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I grew up down the street from John Brooks here. I was watching through the fence, too. My aunt went to school with most of you guys. And I want to say that, first of all, thank you for being the trailblazers that you were. You know, you guys created a path that um, led us, led myself to the end of where you stopped. You know, and I, and I hope that I've set an example for young men after myself, as you all have for me. Um, you know, and then you have a story, you know, a history uh, of some words that come to my mind, like love, teammates, uh, integrity, fortitude, all those things that lead you into just everyday life. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm proud of myself today as a man. I don't want to be anybody but me. And all of that came from being among other young men who had the same idea. We wanted to be successful. We wanted to be winners. We wanted to be people who could be counted on and people who you can trust, people who you were glad to see, you know? So lastly, again, it's just, man, I'm just so grateful to be among you guys, man, because I always heard that you were a legend. So in my mind, you were a legend. And now my name is gonna be mentioned with you all Man, I mean, I, I, hey, man, thank God. I appreciate you, brothers, man. There you go. There you go. Appreciate you, All Tony. right, man. All, All right. right. All right, man. Let's make it informal. Just relax. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 Like we shooting the breeze, buddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah growing up uh, as a football player at Fama Heights, it was like being around your family. Uh, I could go over with my players' house and I could eat. You know, I can put my feet up under the table. You know, and it was just like family. Uh, we had our fights, but we made up. We uh, loved playing football. It was like, it was like heaven, really. Tackle you know, tackle, get up. We, 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 we used to play at the apartments right. up there and run into a, to the window, oh, break the window. And <laughs> keep on playing. Yeah, keep on playing. Think about pushing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No grass. No grass. <laughs> but then, like, uh, when Mr. Cashwell, Coach Cashwell came to Fama Hikes, he brought some, let's say, um, established rules things to go by. Coach Foreman, he only he want only thing he wanted you to do was hit. 
and that was it. Coach yeah. And uh, but Coach Cashwell bought um, different uh, discipline and uh, different plays. We had more than just a hitch pass. <laughs> we 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 had a lot. We had a lot of running, but uh, most of all, we had. Uh, a lot of we had uh, some passing to go in with the running, and uh, he also bought some some defensive schemes. We had uh, I forgot what you call it, where the tackle goes outside and the end comes inside. Stunts, yes, all defensive stunts. He bought stunts in, and uh, we just ate it up. I mean, we we loved it. Um, we were uh, it was two black schools in the county and uh so you know who our opponents were you know so you, we just just had a ball oh, that's my brother al right there he would knock you out man <laughs> <laughs> yeah but my uh thinking back here in summer you know with my colleagues my brothers my teammates are expressing right now it's it's, it's, it's taking me back now um i was just honored really to meet carlos and antoine who's put this really thing together. I mean, with serious hard work, serious. And this wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for those two guys right there, and I'm quite sure a few other brothers. But for me, um, you know, before I started playing football, I was a baseball player and a basketball player, and I thought I was too small to play football. So when I was in the 10th grade <clears throat> in gym class, you know, gym class, when you get an opportunity to do your thing, whatever you're doing, whatever sports it is, we, we play sports by the season. We didn't play sports, you know, basketball all year round. No, by the season. So anyway, um, Coach Coach Farmer was my baseball coach, and he said, hey, kiddo, you need to come out for the football team, because he saw me throwing the ball. I said, Coach, I'm too small. Uh, don't worry about that. We'll take care of you. <laughs> we'll make sure nobody hits you and stuff. <laughs> I said, you sure? <laughs> so that, in, that enabled me now to, to gain some form of confidence. If, if, you, if, if your coach believes in you, of course, that helps you out uh, tremendously. And um, so, you know, as the quarterback um, during that era, um, the responsibility was always to make sure we fought to the to the end. We fight to the finish. We're never out of a game. Um, even to this day, you've had an adversity in life. You're never out of it as long as you keep fighting. Okay, you got to keep fighting. So that's what they taught us in, um, in the sports world um, at Farmer Heights with you know basically two coaches at the time, Coach Farmer, Coach Freeman, who had been to that school since the school opened in 1950. And Farmer Heights is known as a family atmosphere school. I mean, you feel the love right now. You feel the love. Whenever you're around Farmer Heights folks, you know you're in the presence of greatness. You know, because we had outstanding teachers, we had outstanding administrators, and they set that stage for us. Um, and we followed, because if we didn't follow, there were consequences. Yeah. Just ask Mr. Ransom, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come here, Cap. Come here. Let me wake you up a little bit. Pow, pow, pow. <laughs> so, so that discipline and structure, you know, transfers us to the gentleman we are today. I mean, look at us. You know, we have families we, we, we raised. Um, we're in the twilight of our careers, but I'm just, I'm still going strong. 50 years on my job. It feels like 10. Um, but that's that mindset that I get back to, to, to when I started with my heights. So you keep doing whatever you feel. You know, what makes your heart feel good as long as you're helping somebody along the way. And that's what Farmer Heights instilled in me many, many years ago. And um, so it's just great to see uh, Cease, who grew up with me in the same apartment. He became a quarterback at Hampton while I was quarterback at Norfolk State. So we had to go against each other, so y'all, you know what happened. <laughs> you know, but I was extremely still proud of him because he'd stepped in at Hampton and did his thing as, as I did in Norfolk State. And that goes back to that coaching, that confidence that our coaches put in us. So we both started freshmen at colleges. And that was unheard of at this time. And that I was playing against some of the best uh, football players in the country who had to go to black schools, you know, uh, Willie Lanier, Elvin Bethea, these guys are Hall of Fame players. Uh, you're talking about, uh, 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 what's my man named, Coach of um, uh, Archell. I mean, all these 
big, huge dudes was playing at Mer Maryland State. Maryland State. Yeah. Maryland State had guys, man. Yeah, they just was real football players. They couldn't be recruited by you know the white schools. So we we faced the cream of the crop, and um, so that that helped us. Um, you know, the Family Hikes experience helped me say, okay, they still got to put these shoes on and the uniforms the same kind of way. Yeah. So, right. you never, you never have fear about your opponent. You respect your opponent, but you never fear. Even when Family Hikes, even we won winning, they knew we was in a game because we always won the physical game. You know, so we was a physical football team and a together football team. So let me give this tremendous running back next to me, Ron Carter. <laughs> Hey, th thanks, Brother D. You know, when I think about all the testimonies and you think about sports in general, how sports has really has really guided us throughout our life and on the job. We talk about sports and relationships. You know, you, you eliminate the I, my, me. It becomes we, our, us. And it's taught us it's taught us a lot. I actually transferred from Bladensburg in the 10th grade. But I had to come over and hook up with my brother. And I missed playing with Brother D in 66 because I was at Bladensburg. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, when you think about it, I think about the support we got from the students, the teachers. I had a chance to again play with my brother and my sister was the cheerleader. One thing I can think about Femmer Heights, we hated to lose. And practice was harder than the game. I mean, we competed so hard that the game became like routine. Mm -hmm. And so we also cherish those that are not here that have transitioned. So these memories and, and the thing that Carlos was talking about, if, we, if you realize every struggle we have as black athletes, every struggle strengthens us. So I, I'm just glad to be a part of this. It's just a blessing, again, for those that are here and that those that have tra uh, transitioned. So again, we take nothing for granted. We love our brothers and uh, our evidence is here and the camaraderie. So thanks for letting me share. Yes, sir. All, right. Yes, sir. all right, all right, brother. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Feminine Heights prepared me for everything I am today. I'll never forget Coach Formey. I was able to go to his house. He lived over on Texas Avenue. Anybody know that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's where he lived in D.C. And he was more like a father and ransom that character. But the fact of the matter is, all of those guys prepared me for. I had this. Uh, I thought that I wasn't capable of doing certain things, and everybody was saying, "Yes, you can. Yes, you can, Coach Farmer." my man Ransom and Pinky Freeman. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, that's where I got my direction. And we played, now I'm gonna share something with you. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Parker over here. Are you related to Fluff? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Well, see, <laughs> that is, that is, Fluff is, I think Fluff graduated in 58, right? Yeah, yeah it was 58. He's Sixty. You draft? Are you talking about? No, I'm not talking about draft. Who graduated from Famine Heights? I think he graduated in '55. '55. Yeah, he did. He did. He, went, he did. He did go to Morgan. I was trying to figure out when he graduated. But those are the guys that came through that system and and made a great life for themselves as a result of the people who guided them. That is the thing that I will never ever forget about Famine Heights. I'm 80 years old now, but the fact of the matter is, it gave me what I needed. And my teachers there at Feminine Heights, I'll never forget Miss Bronson, as long as I live. Anybody know Miss Bronson? No. Anyway, let me tell you about her. Miss Bronson said to my father one day, you better save your money, that boy going to college. Good. They sent me off. I didn't even know I majored in chemistry is what I majored in. Wow. And uh, it was amazing. Uh, and I got all of that from Ransom, Farmer, Pinky Freeman, all of those people who were related to sports. Now, back in the day, we didn't have anybody to play. So we would get on the bus. We would play Bates in Annapolis, Parker Gray over there in Virginia. Because at that time, you couldn't play anybody. The only, there was only other black school in PG County was Douglas. That's right. We, we went as far down as Cambridge. That's, those were the teams that we played. That was a great time in my life. I'm going to pass on because I tend to talk a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey.
Right. You too. All right. Yeah. Great stuff. Because yeah. wow. I was going to talk. love him. He just talk. Listen, man. I ain't seen the bike yet. I ain't like Yeah, that's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Showtime. That's fascinating. Um, I came from a little different background because I moved here when I was in the seventh grade from a city in West Virginia where uh, I may have been one of four students growing up in elementary school. Oh yeah. All, all, you know, majority population. So when I got to uh, this area and going to Bethune uh, yeah. Yeah. with Coach uh, Hawkins, Hawkins and yeah. uh, Coach Jones, mm -hmm. that was a whole new, and going to school with all people that were your same color mm -hmm. and our teachers, I had never had a black teacher before so uh this this was a fascinating time for me to get adjusted to so i want to give shout outs to coach coach hawkins we had a we played championship schools at i mean we had a championship teams at bethune i think yes, right Petey? Yes, yes, yes. so we, we we rolled through and we were the only black yes. school maybe only black school majority black school in the county but we rolled through it uh coach hawkins the same kind of thing had me play a quarterback uh, I was playing defensive back to seventh grade. Then he saw me throw the ball and said, okay, you're going to be the quarterback next year. So in eighth grade, he, he made me play quarterback. I went to Fernmont Heights and I was playing defensive back. And he said, no, you're quarterback. So I started off, you know, quarterback again. But I want to give shout outs to Coach Hawkins and Coach Jones and Bethune and Addison Chapel Apartments. We played between cars mm -hmm. and I followed Harvey. I wanted to be like him. He did, you know, played baseball, basketball, football. I wanted to emulate what he did. So he was, you know, my mentor growing up. We used to walk to practice together for the year, one or two years that we were there together. And uh, then, you know, he left and went to Norfolk State. I ended up going to Hampton a couple of years later. But, uh, you know, like this young man said, the instructors that we had, the atmosphere, the competition of of players that you had, and when we all of some you know some of us or all of us that went away and played against people from other areas of the country, I would always go up and I'd say, Dad, you know, I'm playing with some guys that could be playing right here, you know, with me, uh, because of the level of competition that Fairmont Heights provided. And it, like Harvey said, it was it was football in the fall, basketball, then baseball. Then you know, then we went and repeated itself <laughs> the next year. But we all were able to accomplish so much. I think because of the program was set up, Coach Coach Cashwell, Coach Freeman, Coach Cade, um, the teachers, incredible throughout. You know, you know, uh, Miss Kenyard. I, I mean, we could go through Mr. Wells and uh, Mr. Barnes. I mean, we could just go down the line. Mr. Curry, Mr. Golson. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Wow. Williams. Yeah. Williams. Yeah. Mr. Williams. I mean, and I think all of that tied in. We were a community. And it, it was amazing because as I drove through the community a few weeks ago, that was, I mean, we went as far as maybe Glen Arden, Vista, Booker T, uh, Chapel Oaks, Inglewood, and we had a ball. I mean, it was that, I don't know if we knew anything going on outside of the, the Beltway, because we were inside, right. and yeah. that insulation that we had with people that you knew kind of protected us, you know, to a degree. You know, uh, parents, uh, older people we listened to, teachers. Yeah. It was fat. Now looking back on it, it was fascinating because I actually went into coaching <laughs> after getting out of college, and uh, it was a little different situation. And I think obviously uh, the 70s and 80s came into play, but in the 60s and 50s, you know, we listened to what we were told to. We appreciated that, even though we may not have understood it. We followed instructions, mm -hmm. and we did what we were told. Maybe grumbled under our breath, you know, cursing our breath, but we didn't show that any a, uh, 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 disrespect yeah, yeah. to our coaches at all. I've never seen that happen, and I. Uh, <laughs> That's true. But uh, that that experience, and when one last thing. Um, you know, well, as, as we all matriculated afterwards and we went into our own careers, uh, that set up the basis. A lot of fond memories of, of, uh, of competition. We won, um, and, and that was just 
the, a matter of, 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 of practice and, and the level of respect that we had and what we followed and what we did. So uh, it's, it, it, it holds on to this day and everything most of us do, we can remember back when. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Uh, Peter Stewart, what do you start with? First of all, I was considered the loud mouth <laughs> forever. In 10th grade, I played for Cashwell's first year there. I played. I was just sat on the bench for a while, and then I ended up winning the position and started, and the quarterback was Harvey Dorsey, who could throw a football a mile, probably still can. Caswell instilled then, I don't care who you are, do your best, and then you will be rewarded in the long run. So we kept 66 was kind of a rough year, but 60 year, 66 happened to be the first year of integration. That's when they finally let black kids go to the white schools. And what those coaches who had been watching us play, first thing they did was take the athletes. They picked the star athletes within those in our two schools and took them. And of course, our father became Mr. Fox. And all them, they did that. That made a difference to us. But what it did was we were triple A school until that year, 66, then we became AB. When we became AB, Caswell said the, the same, same folks, different strokes. Let's keep on doing, playing a physical game, like Harvey said, but let's see differences. We would practice like it was crazy. We practiced against the JV and the younger kids, but we also instilled in what we were doing. I play center, and in the backup center, whenever he got in, I was there to help, tell him what, what I thought would make to help him, what was going wrong. Castro got that into us, and then as we began to say, he said, there's a light at the end of this tunnel. When you scrimmage this team, and we went to D.C. and we scrimmaged Anacostia, which happened to be where my brother was the head coach, and um, they, we were scared. We drove through an alley to get to the school, yeah. and the alley, yeah. girls were hollering, screaming, calling, yeah. look at them little country boys, because yeah. they take them on tags, and the players said, y'all bamas, we gonna kick y'all, mm. oh, And we like, hey, so they had us intimidated. Cash would say, if you go out there and you embarrass me, I'm gonna embarrass all of you. So you know what that meant? <laughs> like to say, hey, we can win this. And what happened was, individually, we became better. We didn't have two coaches, and they didn't do a lot of skills, but they talked about it. They talked about it. They said, look, you're a center, you should be able to snap the ball to the corner, to the punter. You're a center, you should be able to block down on either side. As a guard, you need to pull it, hit somebody, and knock their head off. And that's what they did. They just kept putting it in our head, kept putting it in our head, and we started winning, and winning became unbearable. We enjoyed it. They, what they did at the school was they changed the whole atmosphere for football. Football players on Friday did not have to go to any classes. We stayed together all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Bull crapping, enjoying, eating. I had a car and I was always the one with a car. And we would sneak out and go get food and everything. That changed all kinds of stuff. It changed the way we felt. So when the game came, we was ready to be up on anything that wasn't wearing burgundy and gray. Mm -hmm. If you wasn't one of us, you was getting whipped. We was going all over the place. So consequently, what football did was it instilled in me some manhood things. Which Castro told me, you can't. You got to go into service because you you need to grow up because you talk too much and you always in everybody's business. But what saved me at football, and I'm about to be finished, was Cashwell. When he came there, first year he was fine. Second year, he adopted somebody as his son, and I call him his son. Long Dickerson. I said, y'all look alike, that's your son. He done snuck and met with your mama somewhere. Because you, Dick was a coach on the field, and Cashel was a coach off of the field. And he loved Lawrence Dick loved him to death. But he, he couldn't get along with nobody else, Dick fan. Lawrence Dickerson's brother offered to beat Cashel up at a football game. That's what he said, you stop dropping passes. Harvey throwing the best pass in America. Catch the ball. And Didi said, you want to try to catch it? Get out there and catch your... Mm. 
And Castro took offense. So he said, well, let's fight. And they was going to fight in the locker room. Not in Dubai. I'm like, whoa, boy. I said, hey, man. I knew then I got a big mouth, but I ain't going against this. This grown man will fight us. And it, it's, it was something We enjoyed playing together. All of us have, have lifetime friendships. We, everybody we played with then, we knew. We are still friends to this day, forever. And we loved it. Seats went to have I ended up in Elizabeth City, which was, at that time, North State was beating the hell out of us. We could beat Hampton, but we couldn't beat North State. And uh, it changed things. Yeah, it was, it was dead. <laughs> and, but it, it, it's still things in us that are still going on today. Manhood and brotherhood. We believe in each other. And that's why Family Heights, this place here, anything we can do to support this place, we're going to do. All right. Because we appreciate it. <laughs> And before I give it to Mr. Walker, he had, he had a sister, Betty. Betty? I, 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 I always had a crush on Betty, but she wouldn't give me no play because she liked the do rats. No, my aunt. My aunt. Because fluffs, fluffs, yeah. I'm going to make a phone call to her when I get out of here about you. Betty Joseph. You Betty Joseph. Yeah, Betty Joseph. That's right. She liked the do rats. She did. Back in my time, they were bad dudes. Yes, they were. Still are. Still are. Bad and, the people, and I'm through. And people don't realize that we know Kevin Durant, all of them. We know everybody. I tell 22 kids. That's right. They don't believe us. That's right. Fort that's Durant, what we call their house. He from, he way from Cedar Heights to Jefferson Heights. That's, that's right. Where they that's right. right. If you touch that family, you would do. That's right. Thank you. Um, Joe Parker, class of 75. We have a unique story, my, my team. We were on a championship run at Bethune, Mary McLeod Bethune. Uh, at the time, uh, Mr. Maurice Brooks, John Brooks' younger brother, was our quarterback. Fearless, throw the ball a ton. Just a man amongst boys. We talk in 1972, Brown versus education. The real deal came down from the federal courts that black schools needed to be integrated. Prince George's County, it was really Prince George's County, needed to integrate, so it was a forced deal. Now, we are growing up in a neighborhood, all black, going to see Coach Freeman, Coach Cashwell win championships. It's our time to be coached by the greats. Guess what? They get uh, jobs to become vice principals, and we lose the shot. You know, sometimes it's all about timing. timing. We win championships under Pipelo and Peyton. When we leave to graduate, they come with us. Kaya, the principal, comes with us. White folks come. This is Mr. Ransom line. Parker, you know when white folks come, things begin to hum. <laughs> Over Bethune, we had to take the five foot or six foot mats and tie about 30 mats together to make one mat when there was a wrestling match. All of a sudden, when they announced integration, we got one big, beautiful mat, blue mat with a B in the middle of it. Parker, did I tell you? <laughs> white folks come, things begin to hum. So, it took, as a young man, you kind of understand that there is a, t a conversation in the community at large about integration and what's about to come. But we as athletes realize that the greats have left the house, the, the building. But little did we know, speaking of timing, that Coach Payton would become the winningest football coach mm -hmm. in Fairmont Heights history. That says a lot, and I got all the respect, mad love for Coach Ralph Payton. Um, he went through a lot in, in those days, in the 19, early 70s, because he was really and an and, 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 and unknown factor as coach as a coach but he earned the right he earned the respect um, I just want to say in my class we put the first integrated class on the field all right know that That's right. we put the first integrated class there was a wide receiver I played wide receiver but there was also another cat on the other side Joe Baden Bad. Fred Belitnikoff, we called That's him. That's the name I was giving to say. <laughs> Fred Belitnikoff, he was nice. He was nice. Um, we also had Robin McConnell, who was also that year. We had three All-Mets, Maurice Brooks, Joe Baden, and Robin McConnell. 
um, had a real nice mix. Unfortunately, we didn't make the big championship like we wanted to, but again, this was a neighborhood what really was more like a village. Because everything, like I went to see you play at the fence. The fence is where I saw John play. I would see John play basketball. I mean, so there was so much, it was a legendary community producing legendary people. And we grew up living in this neighborhood with our teachers. Teachers were at, at, at Aston Chapel. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Gaskins lived right across the street from high school. Yeah. Mr. Forrest. Yeah. I mean, so this yeah. neighborhood, man, Mr. Jeter. If you live at Aston Chapel apartments, you know, you know Mr. Jeter. Mr. Jeter, Mr. Jeter Mr. if you didn't know Mr. Jeter, he knew you. You related to the Jeters? Oh, yeah. 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 So, so the reality is this is a wonderful time time for me. Now I represent, I'm sitting in a chair where Maurice Brooks is supposed to be sitting. Yeah. But I just want to let y'all know, Maurice was truly great in everything he did and I know where he learned it from. Yes, I do too. I know that's right. <laughs> 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 yeah. And with that, he, he I'm going to pass the mic. Thanks, guys. Yeah. You know, and thank you for letting me be last because I hear all the great stories about teamwork and what have you. And I, I promise not to be over an hour with this thing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, the people that I idolized when I was growing up, looking through the fence, looking down the hill, mm -hmm. from Night Street seeing Harvey and Blue Play, number 80, I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, Petey, you know, with that special helmet, he's going to talk right. about that right. before it's over. <laughs> you know, and he'll tell you about it, Carlos. But, but most right. importantly, yeah. playing at Fermont Heights was an experience. Uh, when I played as a ninth grader, JV didn't have have a clue. I was four string JV. What that means is if the dummy broke, they stood me in for it. And all that kind of carrying on. I got my big break when the first, second, and third string tackles got hurt. Coach Freeman said, go in the game. I didn't know what to do. The only thing I knew is stay low, run hard, and run fast. I ran straight ahead, and they ran a draw. I ran into the dude, and I'm laying on the ground and looking at my teammates, and they're cheering. I said, what in the world are they cheering for? They said, you made a tackle. I said, is that what it's called? They ran the same play again. The guy dropped the ball and I just fell on it. I went to the sideline, my teammates were jumping all over. I said, what is this for? I'm, that's how naive I was as a ninth grader. After the game, I'm walking home down that street, you know, through Chapel Oaks. Coach Freeman said, come here, son. Why didn't you tell me you could, you could play? I said, you never asked me, <laughs> you know. But more importantly, it was a great experience there playing at Fairmont. You know, I was fortunate. Our team, you know, we mirrored with Harvey and those guys done. We won championships, championships year after year. We're fortunate. When I played my senior year, we had two, actually we had three all-met football players. We had two all-met running backs at the same time, Fred Tabor and Derek Wooten. So we were good. Uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to start it. I made our conference as a, as a sophomore playing with Carwell and Petey and them. I don't know how that happened, but anyway, uh, Coach Ca uh, Coach Cashwell allowed us a little flexibility. He asked me what I wanted to play. I did not want to play defensive tackle, and he said, why? I said, I can't see nothing down there. So we played a 53 defense where defensive ends stood as linebackers and rushers. That was right up my alley. I could see what was going on. So we did that. Great experience. It goes on and on. I was fortunate enough, you know, like I said, to make all met several times. I mean, my senior year and go off to college. And I have to stop and thank this man right here. If he hadn't been there, I wouldn't have made it. All right. <laughs> Hold on. All right. All right. All right. Man. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Good. Okay. But I made it anyway. I made it anyway. It just to make seats feel a little better. Yes, I beat you in college too. <laughs> and to make and, and, and to make and to make Harvey feel good, I you know, we did touch up Norfolk State too. My freshman year, we won the championship. And, and it made me feel bad because my wife is from Virginia and her homegirls were over the house one night and they came by the house and I said, oh, where you go to school? She said, Norfolk State. And I said, mm. She said, you know Harvey Dorsey? I said, I said, get out of here. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> but most importantly, it was a great experience. One thing I do hold against Fairmont Heights and against Harvey and Cecil might back me on this one. I didn't know how to lose when I went to college. We won all the time. <laughs> so when we lost the game, I didn't know what to do. I said, what do you do? We won all the time. But 
you know, that brotherhood, Coach Cashwell working with us, uh, help us develop into the gentleman we are. I went on to be an educator, as most of you know, as a high school principal and all those great things. But I do will tell you a real quick story. Uh, a few years before I retired, superintendent of school calls me and said, John, I need a favor from you. And PD knows you never want the superintendent to call you. Either you're going to get fired or transfer, one of the two. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. He said, I need a favor. I want to send you a new vice principal. I said, I don't need one. But you know, I said, whatever, just sit up. I didn't think to ask the name. <laughs> Next morning, I get to school, I walk in my office, who's sitting right there? Coach Cashwell. What? I said, what are you doing here? He says, <laughs> I, and he says, I work for you now. I said, well, just yeah. oh, 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 oh. Hey, oh, my God. Oh. That's a story. <laughs> yeah. That's a story. That's a story. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, it's a true story. I want you to know, I couldn't wait for him to transfer out. Because <laughs> I can't tell him, but I can't yeah. yell at him. Yeah. But, yeah. No, but it was a good experience. And this is, you know, it, friendly. It's friendly high. Mm. You know, but most importantly, you know, I, and I know we're going to spend some time on this, recognizing this man right here, Carlos. I mean, he has done his work. Oh, you know, and Tony. I can't, him and Tony, I'm sorry, Tony, That's right. That's right. those guys, what they've done for this organization and where you're going, you know, where you're going with the organization is so important. And I hope that it just continues to blossom. And thank you for your time. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, John. Wow. I'm, I'm speechless. Um, but at the same time, I, I, I have a lot of emotion coming out of my heart right now. I mean, this this is just a, a sampling of what's to come. We still have August 6th this year, where you'll see all these men get inducted into the Fairmont Heights Football Alumni Association Hall of Fame Class of 2022. And you know, we're, we're still in the process of trying to nail down a guest speaker, but maybe we should have guest speakers so we can hear the rest of the stories. So with that being said, I want to sincerely thank everyone who came out today. And I want to say, make sure people know that, you know, Fairmont Heights High School was, you know, when it was built in 1950, it was built in the community, it was right next door to our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. And when I was born in 1969, I tried to figure out my whole life growing up while all my friends, parents, said they went to Fairmont Heights. I thought Fairmont Heights was the only high school in the county, but I guess it was if you come from an African-American background. So with that being said, you can see the impact of Fairmont Heights High School, the football program. Program, um, has had on this community, has on the men who are sitting here today, and has on myself. And you know, across the bridge in Virginia, um, myself and Tony, when we were planning the first ceremony, we drove past T.C. Williams High School. And I know they made a great movie about them saying, you know, remember the Titans. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you, we will never forget the Hornets. Hey, thank you tell me about for coming out today. We appreciate you. We love you. We'll see you August 6, 2022. All right. Good job, bro. Good job, bro. All right.